Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, welcome back free flow folks. Oh, managed to get that out. <laughs> um, today's video, we're gonna explore the menstrual phase of our cycle. Um, so if you've watched the inner seasons video, you will have uh, noticed how, um, yeah, we did kind of a little kind of overall uh, view there of how we can use the, um, seasons as a way to talk about the the phases of the cycle um kind of correlating in in terms of like energy and obviously seasons of the year um so yeah today we're going to explore menstrual phase aka uh, inner winter um also if you're using the moon then that would be the new moon um phase of the cycle um so i have my little cheat sheet down here so if i glance down a bit that's why of all I would just give a little bit of info of obviously what's happening um, in terms of like our hormones so hormonally we have the lowest levels of the estrogen testosterone and progesterone at this part of the cycle so um, all of those kind of those three main, main hormones kind of just take a bit of a dip here um, and that for me um, obviously as I explore this today it's kind of uh, coming from my own experience and also you know sometimes obviously um having those shared experiences with people as well but uh just remembering the big red rule that obviously your own experience trumps everything else so you may feel differently about this phase of the cycle and if you do i'd love to you know hear more about it in the comments um yeah just in terms of like where your energy levels are at for example so um yeah, I thought we would, yeah, kind of explore um, a few things in terms of the, yeah, where the hormones are at and then also um, just kind of a bit of an overview. So I won't do like a massive deep dive into this, into this kind of um, phase today. I sort of have a few videos in the future that I'm going to explore. Um, so, and I'm kind of at the tail end of my um, inner winter at the moment. I'm on cycle day six. Um, and yeah, I kind of just have at the, at the kind of tail end of it. So I do feel a bit more, slightly more energized. <laughs> I also had a bit of a late night last night. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit kind of uh, spacey in case you can't tell. Um, so yeah, so uh, the correlation um, in terms of seasons, as I said, is the inner winter and um, the moon phase is, yeah, the new moon. Um, like I say, the energy levels kind of seem to sort of dip a fair bit at the moment. So I would say I would kind of describe my energy levels as being quite low and slow um, during this part of the cycle. And it tends to be um, the easiest way to kind of track the, the menstrual phase is by having day one of that as being the first full day of, of bleeding. Um, and I think it's quite a kind of a poignant part of the cycle because it's in different you know in a different level it's kind of the it's sort of the beginning of a new cycle and also kind of like shedding that you know the end of the last cycle so i feel like it's for me it sort of feels like day cycle day one i do i do tend to have that as as day one of my my full day of bleeding in my in my menstrual phase i know for some people they feel like their day one of their cycle is actually the first day of their inner spring because it's kind of get they've got out all the old kind of oh, out with the old and then in with the new um you know you kind of have to let it go let 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 things go before you bring in the new the new things so and i also actually was on a podcast last year um and one of the um ladies who was also a coach was talking about how one of her um you know one of her her uh uh, people that she's worked with they actually find that they have that kind of beginning fresh start energy in their luteal phase so I think it's really really interesting and I think it's obviously it's you know going with kind of what works best for you but if you're very new to cycle practice and cycle syncing and um you know charting your cycles then I would say I would suggest that have cycle day one as the, the full day of, of bleeding as being the cycle day one of your menstrual cycle so when I kind of discuss this uh, you know going forward that's sort of the approach that I take because it just makes the most sense for me and it just also just feels right having kind of done this cycle practice for about six or seven years now it just feels that to me feels feels just feels right feels aligned um but yeah, so um, I think that, yeah, it's kind of a low a low and slow energy, um, you know, I feel it kind of, in my mind, it almost kind of corresponds a little bit to January because I feel like we've kind of had this peak, you know, of like hormones of the luteal phase 
um, where everything can just kind of feel like with that rise in progesterone, it can sort of feel a bit like, ah, come on, where's my, <laughs> where's my period? Um, and especially if you like by some of you, if someone that has PMDD, you kind of, you might feel this very like sweet relief when your, when your period comes, just cause it's like, ah, oh, okay. Everything's kind of settling down again a bit. Um, so yeah i just think it's really interesting you know the, the the different ways that um and different things that kind of kind of can coexist at the same time as as having these as having these cycles and no no two cycles are necessarily the same either um so i find that my mood during this time tends to be really reflective um and i also kind of like to pick um, a couple of descriptive words for each each phase as well. So my descriptive words for this part is um, restful, intuitive and wise. Um, I do feel kind of this deep level of like knowing and reconne reconnection and, and this, yeah, like this kind of uh, innate wisdom is like being allowed to kind of bloom, you know, when I make time for my bleed and when I can kind of carve out a bit of space, even if I, you know, I have to do that whilst I'm, you know, working my day job, etc. I just try to kind of build in a bit of sort of scaffolding for, for some more space. Um, and that actually is, is something that um, I discussed with Mez Coleman, who's a, um, a singer songwriter over in Australia. And uh, she listened to the free flow podcast that I do with my cousin. And uh, and uh, yeah, we had a, a, some really interesting, you know, back and forth uh, DMs in my Instagram. And I actually had her on for two episodes. We had so much to talk about. We actually did two two recordings. <laughs> and um, one of the things that we really spoke about was kind of scaffolding in, um, you know, kind of moments of rest um and I think that's really important because I think it's really easy for me to kind of sit here and say you know just drop the bundle and like have this you know try and just you know let it let it all go etc etc you know during this time but I I struggle with that I struggle with that massively I'm, I've been very open about that on the podcast and you know as someone maybe it's because of the ADHD but I do as someone that finds it really difficult to rest I do truly feel like rest is radical um, and and I think that when we are able to carve that in with our everyday lives then it becomes more sustainable because if we're if we are just um, you know I think it, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, I'm trying not to go off on too many tangents here but I'm, I'm also just you know <laughs> in the zone a bit I think I'm kind of reminded of when I first started meditating and my um, and, 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 and doing yoga and the teacher was talking about how you know it's really easy to it's really easy to go off like into the mountains and you know sit in a cave and meditate but the hard thing is like weaving that into you know your actual everyday life like carving that time in because that's really when you need it the most you know that's really when you need it so that you don't I don't know fly off the handle at a small <laughs> at a small thing um or you know I think it helps with like building patience and it just helps to give you that like you know that one percent kind of step back before you you know before you react and um, which is definitely something I find really challenging um so I think that yeah building building in scaffolding for your uh, menstrual phase and to be honest with you I I kind of I kind of have to do this for a lot of the other phases as well because otherwise I do go into full-on like workaholic mode burn myself out or I just stay up all night if I'm not careful um and just like watch tv or something because I'm like a revenge bedtime procrastinating to the extreme so yeah I think it's really important to kind of yeah have that scaffolding in place and um yeah and I'd love to maybe um either direct you to the the conversation I had with Mez over in the over on the podcast um and maybe we'll do I don't know like maybe it would be really great to share in the comments any ways that you kind of build in some some scaffolding I know that one um example that Mez gave was that she um was when she was on tour she was just making sure that she sat down when she was doing uh rehearsals rather than standing up just because it gave her you know she had a little bit of juice left in the tank <laughs> um in that in that respect so there's lots of yeah lots of different ways we can kind of ad adopt that for ourselves and um maybe that that deserves a whole episode to itself if that would be something that would be interesting um so yeah so i think that um yeah kind of honoring the kind of the lower the sort of low and slow energy levels is really important and it's really challenging in in the society that we live in you know um i think the action here i've put actions for each one as well i feel like the action here is to daydream <laughs> it's really i really try to just let myself kind of potter around and um yeah kind of allow myself to just gaze out my window a little bit and just or just lie on my bed and just kind of daydream a bit and just kind of have those like moments or in the bath and yeah i kind of just try and allow myself to have that time 
sometimes I'm better at doing that than others um and I have to like not get too caught up in like perpetual worry um but I think yeah carving out some daydream time is is really really good um and just some some quiet time you know which I think actually is is great for the whole of the cycle sometimes if I notice I'm feeling really overwhelmed it's actually because I've not really had either you know any silence in the day I might have just had music or podcasts or tv or something on in the background like constantly and I actually just haven't taken a step back to just be with my own thoughts which sometimes is not very pleasant especially if I am feeling more tired and you know kind of low energy um I've put here um eat warming grounding foods soups broths uh dark chocolate cacao I love a good cacao uh little ritual um during my bleed I think it makes it really really special um and it just feels so nourishing and maybe it's the magnesium that's in it I don't know but it just feels so good <laughs> I've got lots of other you know good nutrients in it as well and then I've also just put um, movement. So I've put uh, rest. <laughs> uh, I haven't written it down here actually, but naps, naps, naps are good too. Um, yin yoga, yoga nidra and walk. Um, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I really try and keep, you know, kind of keep, keep the rest, you know, kind of in place really. I do notice for my mental health that if I'm not careful, like I'm kind of still learning the balance of like, when I need rest versus just like a little bit of movement. Um, I think that's just as much to do with working from home because otherwise if I'm not careful, I do kind of go into hermit mode on my on my bleed and I will just kind of be in my in my room for like, you know, I think I left my room the other day and I was like, gosh, it's been like two, two and a half days since I've left my room, like left, not left my room, but like left the house, <laughs> um, which is, you know, it's not a bad thing, but I just think it's, uh, I'm, I'm starting to maybe think I, especially because it's not the weather, the weather here is a bit hit and miss in the UK. So I think maybe it's just good to like keep going to, to the gym, even if it's just to have like a nice walk. Um, and sometimes that's tricky because there's lots of loud music and it's very bright and I'm not really like w wanting that. But also I think ultimately it probably does a bit of better to just, you know, be in a different, be in a different space and, um, yeah, and kind of just have a bit of gentle movement. Um, so yeah and I think yeah yin yoga is just for me it's the most ideal I really love like a good slow you know yin or um something with like lots of bolsters like restorative um you know like a nice kind of pillow massing to excuse my nails by the way they look atrocious I've got these these three <laughs> I'm still on these ones are not <laughs> hang loose um so yeah <laughs> anyway um so I just thought I would just do yeah a little a little kind of overview of things in terms of like yeah um hormones and just kind of the basics of this part of the the cycle phase um i'm gonna end this video here because i don't want them to be super long i just wanted them to be kind of nice little bite size. yeah let me know how you feel during your uh during your menstrual phase of your cycle um oh and i forgot to say i think it's yeah cycle day i think i was going off on a tangent but cycle day one tends to be and then tends to be kind of till sort of cycle day sort of five to seven tends to be um sort of the the bleed phase for for most people um that i've you know that i've discussed with so um yeah and you, you might kind of feel the estrogen rising a little bit kind of after sort of day three ish so um that will sometimes you feel a bit in a, in a springy as well but we will leave in a spring uh the luteal uh, the follicular phase till next video and um yeah let me know your thoughts um let me know how you scaffold in some radical rest um when you're menstruating and yeah and also remember that obviously with the latter half of the cycle there can be more of a disruption i find to the adhd symptoms because of the the dip in the estrogen um and that is something i'll, I'll speak about a bit more in um, both the luteal and follicular videos so in a spring and in an autumn um yeah so if you do find that then you're definitely not alone and yeah let me know your thoughts um let me know how you scaffold in some radical rest um when you're menstruating and yeah and also remember that obviously with the latter half of the cycle there can be more of a disruption i find to the adhd symptoms because of the the dip in the estrogen um and that is something I'll, I'll speak about a bit more in um, both the luteal and follicular videos. So in a spring and in an autumn. Um, yeah. So if you do find that, then you're definitely not alone. And OK, I'm going to stop recording now, folks, but I will see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, week. Uh, I nearly said life. <laughs> OK, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, folks. <laughs>